Hello, my name is Todd Euston, the CEO of Active. I met some of you a little while ago. Um, Active Surgical is uh, the technology, and here's our vision up on the screen, and I want to tell you a little story of, of why this vision means something to us as an organization. Oftentimes you hear of uh, the description of a patient that's ill or 35-year-old male. This is a situation. Here's a real story that sometimes you hear. It's uh, uh, Ryan, a 35-year-old father of two, uh, went in for a colectomy with no complications for part of his treatment for Crohn's disease. After two days, Ryan was uh, released from the hospital and told by his physicians, if you have any issues, fever, pain, call us. A couple days later, abdominal pain, went back to the hospital. The hospital gave him some medication and he was released with no further tests. A few days later, Ryan's not feeling too well. He's with his kids at home. And Ryan is told by his primary care physician, you probably want to get back to the hospital after he told him his symptoms. He couldn't go to the bathroom. He was, his stomach was bloated. He was just feeling tremendous pain. Went back to the hospital. They decided to run some tests, did a CAT scan. A few hours later, they realized he had a, um, a leak in his bowel from the pr earlier procedure. He had to go under immediate surgery. Had the surgery, developed what's called compartment syndrome. He died in the ICU about a week later. Went in for a procedure without any complications. The reason I tell the story is last night we heard from one of our VCs in the panel. I thought it was an excellent quote. Don't come to us unless you have a problem. So the third leading cause of death is probably not something that everyone realizes. It's preventable surgical errors. These aren't patients that go in with terminal illness. Preventable surgical errors. Over 400,000 patient, 400, patients a year in the United States alone die from preventable surgical errors. 15% mortality rate for anastomotic leaks. And we spend over $2.6 billion on anastomotic leaks with just colorectal procedures. This isn't a colorectal story. This is just one example is why I bring this up. Let me tell you why. This picture that you see here, this is a, this is a bowel taken out. It basically it looks like there's adequate blood flow all throughout. Turn on what's called active site, which is a technology that we have. And this is what the physician is going to see live time at this speed that you just saw in a case with the existing scope with no injectables, no fiducials, no anything. Now you can clearly see where there's no blood flow. You can go into a procedure today if you can identify blood flow, which is one of the first principles of surgery, if you can identify blood flow before you do an anastomotic cut, any, anything that ends in ectomy in surgery, during a procedure and after, you want to reduce anastomotic leaks, there's no system in the world today that you can go in after you sew back and an, do an anastomotic leak to tell if there's adequate blood flow. If there's adequate blood flow, there won't be an anastomotic leak and 15% of these patients don't have to die. Today, there's an injectable called ICG. Stryker purchased a company called Novadax for $700 million a few years ago. Novadax's main purpose is a camera system to identify, to inject a dye, ICG, to identify blood flow. The picture on the bottom right clearly shows, on the bottom left of that picture, that's ICG, shows you that there's no blood flow there. That's okay, that's wonderful. It does its job, it tells you. But as you see from active site, you can see throughout the, throughout the entire procedure where there is blood flow where there isn't blood flow. The difference between the right and the left is, is, is a strong difference, and I'm gonna show you what happens in a procedure right now in an animation. Basically, ICG has been around for 50 years. It's injected today. The platelets you see there are blood flow. As you see the blood flow, it's gonna be clamped off. Fluorescent green shows up on the screen. If you notice, that spot is clamped off, there's no blood flow, but the fluorescent green, since it's a dye, still shows up on the screen, telling the surgeon that there's adequate blood flow there. The green only goes where there's blood flow. But if you stop the blood flow, it's still going to be green because it's a liquid dye until it dissipates out of the system. Active site, it's wavelengths of light, which we can give you more information as we go forward. Not only tells you the blood flow, it measures the blood flow. On the top right there, you can see the bar going up and down. When blood flow is stopped, you visibly see it, and you also see quantitative measurement to demonstrate to the physician in real time. This is the only, so this is on the operating room table through a traditional scope. So how does this get delivered? Well, first, it's important to make sure that we have the proper team in place to make sure that we deliver this. And usually, I would start any presentation with team. We're not a traditional startup company. And um, many of you heard my background before. 
I was the past president of Olympus Medical, I was the president of Smith and Nephew Orthopedics, and I was at Boston Scientific for 15 years, heading up the US in, in the neurovascular um, organization, and then before that in the GI space. Um, we brought in, a I brought in a team of leaders that I felt they know the space, they know the playbook, so basically we're scalable, we're ready to go, we'll go enter the market, we know the customers, we know the market, we know all the physicians, and uh, Joel Binney has led organizations in ENT and selling organization and marketing. Arthur Leach, we're one of the few startup companies, one of my first hires was operations because I feel like I have the answers to the test. Because with those answers to the test, I know that the first thing that any strategic is gonna ask me is you have a quality management system. And we do. And uh, we're making sure that we're doing things right, we're scaling the company the right way. So as we go forward, it's not just about blood flow. Active is a, it's an intelligence platform that provides real-time insights and capabilities far beyond current solutions, but the technology integrates with existing hardware that's in the OR. I didn't want to build a scope, I didn't want to build towers, because unless I have the cure for cancer, no one's moving the existing uh, landscape and hardware that's in those hospitals right now. I was at Olympus, I know how hard that is to move between Stryker Storch and Olympus and the models that are there. Um, but basically our goal is to provide real-time views that physicians can't see today. The video that I showed you, that you can see blood flow in real time, that's real and that's ready now, that's ready today. Here's how it would work on existing systems. I wanna walk into a hospital tomorrow, whether they use Stryker, whether they use Storch, whether they use Arthrex, whether they use Olympus, and I'm gonna tell them that we're ready to go and you can start seeing blood flow in real time, and then you can start identifying critical structures in the, in the anatomy, tissue characterization, lymph nodes. We're identifying all these things over time with our data collection, and this is how this works. An existing scope that's already in the hospital. Active site is that little piece right in the middle. It's called an imaging mod module that has our key sensors inside, and there's a small light engine on the, on the, uh, on the tower that we, we attach, and that's it. So we're not, we're seamless. We're going right into the hospital with your existing technology, and you're now gonna be able to see the things that you can't see otherwise. Before an, an anastomosis, during an anastomosis, after an anastomosis. Where does that play out? It plays out everywhere, but there's over 150 million scope procedures done in the world. We're narrowing this down a little. There's 4.2 million of the four most common procedures of which every one of these common procedures you need to identify blood flow and you need to understand critical structure identification. Whether it's a common bile duct, whether it's the ureter, whether it's the, the regular blood flow as I just shared a little while ago and I showed you some pictures for any anastomosis. Because every one of these are an ectomy. It means I'm cutting something out and I have to sew it back together. The only way that I know that I sewed it back together effectively if, if I can prove blood flow. First principle of surgery again, and it's something that we take advantage of. And when this many patients are dying every year, it's something that we wanna make sure that we're paying attention close. Because of that, the amount of procedures, we'll be in 500,000 procedures uh, within four years, and that's that one product, that's our generation one without going any farther into all the other things that Active can do, is a few hundred million dollar market for us. And that is less than a few percentage points of that 150 million procedures. So we're not talking a lot, but this is something that's gonna be a click per use. It's gonna stay with the camera, that little device, it stays with the camera, so every single procedure, when the doctor clicks it and uses it, it goes to the cloud, pay, the hospital will be billed, it fits under the DRG system, and we'll talk about CPT codes with anyone that's interested as we go forward. But everything that we do right now on the intelligence platform, Active Edge, it's the brain that powers all of Active. Active Sight, which is everything I showed you up to this point, is generation one. Active Insight, as soon as that procedure is over, the data on that little module that's attached to the scope, the procedure data only, goes into the cloud. That data is stored. That data is gonna be annotated by clinical specialists, surgeons, clinical research fellows, and what have you, making sure that it's all from ground truth data, inferencing on the edge, making sure that then it's, it fills the loop and it continues to go back into any system in the, in the world that has active. That's, it's gonna constantly be updating to make sure that we're providing new data in real time. There's a lot of data companies out there, but it, there's no way to deliver the data into a case. I just showed you the way that it gets delivered into a case and I'm about to show you one more in a second. Our foundational technology was taking this software by Dr. Peter Kim at Children's National Medical Center and it programmed into um, off-the-shelf robots and the robots performed autonomous robotics and it was published in Translational Science. Um, in 2016. So we're working our way, we're gonna be working with all the robotic companies, working with the, um, uh, the laparoscopic companies as well. These are, the, these are the groups that we've worked with and we're working, we're, we have the opportunity to work with as well. And I shared what happens with the data um, from each procedure. 
And let me show you what we do with that data and what it's going to look like to a physician um, within short order as they start getting more and more data. This is the live shot that you'd see endoscopically, laparoscopically in this particular case. We want to do this paint by numbers in a sense. So any physician, whether they do five procedures a year or whether they do 500 procedures a year, should have the same exact information every time. So if you're a patient and you go to a hospital in Mass General or you go to a hospital in the middle of Iowa that just does less procedures, doesn't mean they're worse, you should have the same exact information. You see the way that that was drawn out, that the, the, uh, the cystic ducts were identified clearly and then we're giving direction to place a clip. We're telling the doctors exactly what you need to know in your critical view of safety. We're identifying key landmines and landmarks of what you want to go after and we're giving you the directions. Basically, we've, in the short order, we, the, the team has done a lot. We're uh, venture backed. We completed our Series A last year. Uh, we're starting our Series uh, B to close this July or August. And um, basically, we're going uh, FDA. We've had our pre-submission last, last year. FDA for, for uh, Generation 1 uh, submission is quarter 2. Uh, it, class 2, no human clinicals. So the technology will be ready in about four months from there. We start our limited market release. We're doing first in man. We don't need any human studies, but being in medical as long as we have, we know it's really important to have them because it's nice to show your customers and your doctors and everything else. Best part about this is we're, we're well, besides going to the data I just lit up on the bottom, the company will have 1,000 surgeon annotated data sets. And big deal, what does that mean? It's actually from ground truth data, segmented outcome data. The largest annotated surgical data set out there is about 125 patients and maybe four places have it. This is true annotation using the intelligent light and RGB video, which is what your, your normal video is. But with that information, the best part about this is we basically already have commitments from the first aid place. I can't go out and sell something that's not 510K. We're working with advisors at these institutions. The key thing is, we, we're, if you notice the institutions, we're not talking about small shops that we're working with uh, everything outside of clinical. We've already done the clinical. We've proved our non-inferiority to the FDA. We're now basically focused on value analysis, payer reimbursement, pricing, strategy, everything else that you need to do with these hospitals and making sure that we're covering off. And we're working uh, closely. And each one of them are hospital systems, as you notice. So you go into one, you start working with all of them. We're very lucky with our, um, our advisory board. Um, Dr. Schweitzberg is past president of SAGES, one of the largest uh, surgical societies in the world. Uh, Dr. Vip Patel is the number one robotic surgeon in the world. We're not even in the robots yet, but Dr. Patel said the reason that I'm interested in this technology is because your company is not just focusing on hardware and robotic arms, you're focused on software and visualization. And if I can see more, I can do more, and I can take advantage of my robots going forward. Dr. Devari is the head of um, robotics and ENT at uh, University of Pittsburgh Medical Center, 46 hospitals. And Dr. Eric Wilson's bariatric surgeon at Memorial Hermann. So, uh, and Dr. Park is at Johns Hopkins. A wonderful physician, wonderful team, and they're all focused on different things. We have a very strong IP portfolio going back to 2012. Uh, before we even became a company, we were uh, basically out of the clinical research uh, facility of a hospital, and that's where this started by our founder, Dr. Peter Kim. And we're basically now raising $25 million. And the $25 million will take us uh, from the point that we close in July or August, it'll take us out another 18 months on top of about $7 million in the initial um, revenue that we'll, we'll, we'll drive for the original, original um, dollars that we have. We'll have a, from the original eight hospitals and those systems, we'll generate about six, six to $7 million on top of the uh, $25 million that we're raising. And these are the focuses. We have two more technologies that'll go through the FDA in 2021, the next generations as I showed you on the timeline as well as um, we're working on our, our collaborative uh, robotic procedures and, and our critical structure identification. Finally, we've been very lucky and blessed to have some recognition. What we laugh about is the very bottom left is um, we were written up in an article why these three surgical robotics companies are Intuitive's biggest threat. We're not a robotic company. We plan on, we didn't interview for it. They read about the company. They saw the company we presented. We want to work with all the robotic companies. We, our goal is to partner with everybody. We're an open platform. We're, we're scalable, we're software. Uh, centric and we're hardware agnostic. And um, the best part about being named in Boston's um, 50 startups to watch is we're only two medical companies were listed and we're very proud of that. So with that, I want to say thank you. Thanks for your time. And um, we'll be in the breakout if anyone has any questions.